Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Okay, we will start shortly around uh, 9.35. Thank you. Okay, uh, can we start now? Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. Okay, first of all, I would like to um, thank our uh, participants for joining our um, webinar this morning. Okay, on the uh, title of Electrical Protection System in Practice. Okay, so uh, this webinar is uh, live bro broadcasted using StreamYard um, through YouTube and also Facebook. Okay, so um, this webinar is co-organized by, um, the main organizer is IEEE Power and Energy Society Malaysia Chapter and also co-organized by um, IEEE Young Professionals Malaysia. 
Okay, so um, our speaker is uh, Insinyur Dr. Muhammad Nur Shahrani Abdul Rahim. Okay, and he will talk about the uh, electrical protection system in practice. Okay, before I pass the session to our speaker, okay, I would like to invite the chair of IEEE um, Power and Energy Society Malaysia Chapter, Prof. Hazli Muklis. Okay, um, Prof. Hazli will um, briefly introduce on the um, IEEE Power and Energy Society Malaysia Chapter. Okay, so with that, Prof. Hazli. Um, Prof. Hazli, your microphone is mute. Okay. 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 Assalamualaikum and very good morning to everyone. Thank you very much for joining our webinar today. I will take a little bit time, maybe two or three minutes only, to pro, uh, give some introduction about IEEE PES. Eh? So I'm sure that everybody know about IEEE. For those who are doing research, you are used to see the IEEE Explorer. So that is one of the uh, benefit of being the member of IEEE. So basically under IEEE, there are a lot of uh, technical societies, uh, around 37 societies. And one of it is IEEE PES Power and Energy Society. Yeah. So in the, under PES, there are a lot of benefit, especially in terms of the technical aspect whereby there are a lot of uh, resources that you can find in the website of IEEE. Uh, however, you need to be a member so that you can uh, get the privilege to get all the resources. Eh? So for example, we have the IEEE PES resources centers. So the website is there. There are a lot of tutorials, video, technical report, journal article, eh, and others interesting uh, technical uh, uh, pictures that you can find in the website. Okay. So in general, IEEE PES, uh, we have 10 region and Malaysia is under region 10. Eh? Under region 10, eh? you can see in the slide on the right side, together with Australia, China, Thailand and others, Asian country. And this is the past uh, IEEE PES leadership in Malaysia. Uh, maybe some of the faces familiar to you if you are a student, maybe you meet some of them, eh? like Prof. Azhar from UKM, Prof. Norman Mario from UPM, eh? Prof. Zainal from UPM eh? and others. Uh, some of them are practitioners engineer, not a lecturer, eh? but majority are lecturers. Okay, so you can see we started in Malaysia, actually in Malaysia since 1994. Eh? Uh, so under IEEE PES, there are a lot of activities. Uh, we organize especially a talk. We organize uh, invited lectures, conferences. We provide awards to engineers. Okay, for example, uh, this year we have like Outstanding Engineer Award, uh, Corporate Risk Award, Outstanding Student Award, Outstanding Chapter Volunteer. Yeah? And we also have uh, activities for students like Five Minute Final Year Project Award. And also uh, recently this year we have EBSCOM whereby we have more than uh, 10 group participate in these activities. Okay. So in order to be an IEEE PES member, you need to be an IEEE member first. And under that, you are able to uh, subscribe to be an IEEE PES. Okay. So for student membership, there are a lot of benefits, eh? uh, especially last time before the COVID whereby some conferences, they provide a scholarship. I mean, student, they provide the student uh, funding to go to attend the conference. Okay, so especially if a member, you have a lot of opportunity to do a networking. Yeah? So this is the current uh, committee, uh, HP PES Malaysia. Uh, uh, it's various, not only lecturers in the committee, there are few from industry. Yeah? So. It is really a benefit for you to join IGP Press Malaysia. So I would encourage everybody to join, especially students in your early career. You will have 
opportunity to meet this industry and the professors so that it will help you in your future career. So with that, I will end uh, my introduction about HP Pest Malaysia. Thank you. Thank you, Shida. Dr. Shida. Okay. Okay, thank you, Prof. Hasli, for the brief introduction on IEEE uh, PES Malaysia chapter. Okay, so um, before we start with the um, talk from uh, Dr. Sharani, okay, I would like to just inform you, okay, if you have any questions uh, regarding the uh, topic uh, um, discussed, okay, you can just type your questions in the uh, chat box in uh, YouTube. Okay, and I will uh, read the questions to the uh, speaker um, after af afterwards. Okay, so uh, without further ado, I would like to um, invite Dr. IR Dr. Muhammad Shahrani Abdul Rahim okay, to give his speech on electrical protection system in practice. Okay, so but before that, let me just briefly introduce our speaker. Okay, Muhammad Shahrani Abdul Rahim received his PhD degree from the University of Malaya in Power System in 2020. Okay, he received the Bachelor of Engineering and Master's Engineering degrees in Electrical Engineering from University Technology Mara and University of Malaya, Malaysia in 2003 and 2012 respectively. He has 17 years of consulting experience. Currently, he is a senior electrical engineer in renewable energy and energy efficiency unit, Public Works Department, Ministry of Works, Malaysia. Okay, his current research interests include power system protection, distribution automation, and renewable energy. Okay, he is a practicing professional engineer. Okay, so with that introduction, I would like to call upon um, IR Dr. Muhammad Shahrani Abdul Rahim to give his talk on the electrical protection system in practice. Okay, Dr. Shahrani, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nurashida. Uh, very good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you hear me? Yes, clear. Hello? Hello, yes, yes. We can hear you, Dr. Sharani. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Uh, wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa bi shahli sadri wa sirri amri wa halul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alim antal alim al hakim. Uh, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi barik wa sallim. First of all I would like to thank uh, uh, the organizer, uh, Dr. Anshida, Dr. Anshida, uh, Prof. Hazli, Dr. Harun, uh, for inviting me uh, to share my experience and a bit of knowledge in this talk this morning. So today I will share a little bit on the protection system. Uh, so I, as I discussed with uh, Prof. Hazli, so this time we'll share uh, some of the protection system in the aspect perspective of uh, practicing engineers. Nah? Okay. Uh, the content for my uh, sharing today is I will start with uh, highlighting the importance of protection system and then uh, highlighting the regulations, uh, compliance in terms of protection for safety and then some uh, angle in the pra uh, practice uh, of the protection aspect and then some issues and challenges and confusion. Eh? Okay, uh, previously I had shared some uh, similar topic uh, in UM for especially for student I2PE, uh, but uh, it's too technical, I think. It's more on uh, application in details. 
So today, since uh, most of the participant I heard is also from industry and uh, also a fresh graduate, so we'll try to uh, see from other angle so that we can discuss the issues and challenges faced by the protection system. Eh? Okay, first of all, let us start with the, uh, the most important thing in the in the industry, lah, eh, which is those the the key players. Uh, even though you are we are in the government sector or private, even you are in the in the uh, practicing, eh, we are being uh, regulated by the laws. Eh? So in the Malaysia, we are we fall under Act uh, 447, which is Electricity, Electricity Supply Act 1990. So all all those uh, our 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 practicing our our implementation are being regulated under these laws. Eh? So the uh, and then we also have a Malaysian standard. Uh, we have various type of Malaysian standards. Eh? So especially for those in the electric installation, we, the, the popular most popular one is the MSIC 60364, and others uh, others uh, such as light uh, light uh, lightning and and uh, distribution part. Eh? So let us uh, recall back the electrical protection, especially in distribution system. Eh? So the key element in the protection is to uh, for the safety of the public user and also the operational side. Eh? Either it's on utility side, uh, consumer, uh, the those operators uh, doing the maintenance, those judgment. Eh? And also the, the another aspect is the supply integrity, which is we want to make sure that the continuous for supply to the consumer. Eh? So in terms of protection, we, we need to uh, to admit that uh, the, the cost of protection device is very costly. Eh? So we need to optimize the decision and how to control the cost and in, in the same time ensure that the our our, our installation, our premise, uh, our properties is being protected. Eh? Okay. So let's go to the real world, uh, to the uh, statistic. Uh, uh, that involve electrical accidents and this is one uh, statistic from the energy commission so Tenaga malaysia is the latest one uh, in 2016 i believe the, uh, sooner or later they will uh, will uh, share with us the latest uh, statistic eh? but let's us just go through with this stati statistic and eh? instead of just looking at the numbers let us see the the those uh, uh, tidak maut dan maut and eh? so those casualty eh? so what what interestingly we can see from these statistics that it's not uh, going it's not uh, getting better eh? we can see that the the statistic uh, is continuous uh, the numbers of uh, death is 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 still at the some numbers that we still need to do something eh? uh, but most interesting interestingly we need to bear in mind that these are the numbers that are being reported and there are also uh, cases which, which are not being reported due to some uh, legal issues etc and especially on those uh, which is uh, didn't uh, involve uh, any death and? okay all right so from those statistics uh, energy commission had come out uh, break, uh, break uh, all the uh, source how does those accidents happen eh? so we can see that uh, from the three tops uh, top statistic eh, the three the three most uh, uh, main cause of the accidents comes from the uh, improper improper installation and maintenance which contribute to 35 percent and also the uh, employee in compliance toward the safety procedure eh? and the third one is the as passing to the premises eh? so from these three three top uh, causes of accidents and eh? uh, energy commission had come out eh? uh, had come out the two things that main uh, makes this this thing happen eh? so number one is the the, uh, the number one number one is the protection device not installed on wiring or even though it, it is being, being being installed but the protection system is not working eh? it happened to me before uh, my pers my personal case uh, personal experience and uh, we had uh, installed a protection system but unfortunately it's not working eh? it's a, so in this case we consider it as a human error or production error eh? and then the second main uh, second issues is the scheduled maintenance for the electrical installation is not being performed eh? so maybe due to due to the due to poor management or, or economic issues and eh? and then even though it being scheduled for maintenance and unfortunately the person who do it is not an 
is unskilled person eh? or, or it's not a competent person they don't have any certificate competency certificate from the energy commission so this, these are the two issues that happen in the industry even though we are we're, we're talking about the regulations enforcement but these are two main issues that we uh, uh, those in the industry need to consider and eh? whether it's a poor management or we are we are less uh, awareness to the to the these issues eh? so let's uh, go go more deeper and eh? uh, the importance of electrical protection so there are three the main importance of protection is to prevent from three 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 things the first thing is damages to the equipment and properties and eh? uh, it can be either from the electrical properties and eh? the switchboard eh? Can we go? It can go some till the consumer side, eh? or, or even uh, let's say in this case, in the failure of maintenance before and after, and eh? the the failure of maintenance, they didn't do the proper shadow maintenance, and eh? so the the becker become moisture, the contact, and then it it, uh, it, it goes to the accident. Eh? So another issues uh, that we need to to prevent is danger from fire. Eh? For example, for the in the in the case of lightning protection, eh? so in this case we can see. Among the main things the failure happened is because the down conductor for lightning protection had been stolen. Eh? So these are uh, issues that uh, those in the industry, whether it's, you are engineers or technician, need to consider the practical issues. We had spent a lot of money installing the copper tape, down conductor, uh, air terminal, but we also need to consider the the culture culture issues. Eh? For example. Uh, in my experience, eh, we, we, we propose to install uh, using a copper tape as material for lightning protection. Eh? But our client said this, uh, this, this area is very prone to, uh, to for stealing copper. Eh? So what we, did, we need as engineers, we need to cater uh, what are the other types of conductor material that can be solved to, to prevent from this uh, current uh, the situation in the, in the culture in the society. Eh? All right. So another factor that we need to prevent in the in terms of protection is injury and death. So among three, this is the most important thing. Eh? The, in terms of damages to equipment, to properties, eh? we, we can sp uh, spend money to get back those, uh, to repair those damages. But in terms of life, we cannot uh, bring back the life. Eh? So you can see from the newspaper cutting, uh, those being injured by lightning, uh, kids, eh? Uh, died because of an electrical shock on the uh, property, uh, public properties eh? and even uh, animals are killed uh, by lightning. Eh? So these are the things that uh, we as a electrical people need to consider how to prevent or minimize the damages uh, to the properties and life. Eh? Okay, so knowing the, 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 the things that we need to protect and eh? So let us go uh, simulate uh, one of the simple uh, accident that might happen even in our house. Eh? So this uh, I I take it from the ST presentation in the electrical safety in 2011. Eh? It's a very good uh, 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 analogy to show to make us understand the importance of protection. Eh? So this guy, uh, since the weekend, he's uh, doing his. Uh, it's daily, uh, Mr. Papa, uh, Mr. Mama works and eh? he's doing a cleaning, cleaning his house and suddenly the appliance or the vacuum uh, uh, is faulty and eh? something happened. So faulty. So what should happen is once there is a faulty eh, in, the, in the appliances, so the, we are as a technical person need to, uh, need to uh, set some protection equipment to make to prevent the damages from going uh, worse. Eh? So what what happened? So once the the appliance is fault, so the fault current will goes through the the green cable, eh, or, or we call it CPC, eh, circuit protective conductor. So it will find its path eh, going either to the CPC cable or through the ground to the earth, get back to the source. Eh. This is the beauty of the uh, engineering, eh, which is the it will goes back the fault current will goes back to the source. Eh. So then you have to complete uh, one cycle, it will trip the protection device. So in this case, we are using RCD eh, as RCD as the protection equipment. Okay. And then so what, what will happen if this equipment fail? Eh? So or uh, either the equipment fail or the, the fault current cannot go, goes back to the to the source. So it will find another another way. Eh? So in this case, you can see that the fault current goes through the the body so our body become the conductor 
for the current fault current to return uh, to the source. Yeah? So these are uh, uh, among example how does uh, accident might happen. Yeah? So we can see further from the next slide and yeah? we can see that how the current pass through our uh, the body and to the hand and then goes through to the foot yeah? which com complete the circle using our body. Yeah? So another issue that if I can uh, shows to you the impact of the fault current. Eh? So for this case, the handheld equipment faulty. And so after a few days, uh, the, the nerves become very bad and it had damaged the, the tendon and the hand. Eh? So this among, among the accident that happened. So let's go through another one, another simple uh, accident that might happen in our house also. So in this case, uh, I shared this slide from Swaja Tenaga also from Energy Commission. So, uh, so in this case, it's a multi, multiple fault, eh? a multiple uh, source of faulty. So in the, the first one is the selection of the RCD is not is, is already uh, violate the requirement. Eh? So for example, uh, uh, they are using the 100 milliam by right under regulation. We are we should use the 10 milliam. Eh? Okay, and unfortunately in this case, the fault current uh, to the faulty from the lighting. Eh? So the leakage current had, had goes to the RCD and it didn't trip. Eh? So in, in this case, unfortunately also the uh, the victim had using a diff, uh, wrong material of uh, shower and eh? they are using a conductor. So it had uh, effect on the uh, his safety. Eh? Okay. So this is among among issues that happen. Eh? Uh, other things that uh, goes to the, even uh, we can go to the material simple material from the forensic shows that uh, the uh, the terminal block even is a very uh, very simple thing but even we try to cut costs using a very cheap material this thing will contribute to the fire right? the another issues on the installation workmanship uh, the the bending of the cable during installation so this thing will also will contribute a uh, failure of insulation of the cable and it might uh, contribute to the fault current. Eh? So as a, as a technical person, especially in the electrical, we shouldn't just thinking about the formula, uh, the, the calculation, but we also need to consider on the installation part and eh? workmanship and, and etc. Okay, so this is another, another uh, simple uh, basic of uh, how we should think of the perspective of protection. Uh, this one I take it from Schneider uh, reference books. Eh? So they, they shared on the one one of the cases, eh, which is how does the fire happen? Eh? So the fire happen especially on, on those in the trunking. Let's say there is some uh, uh, some dust dusty or something that can burn it, eh, being left in the trunking. So after uh, at certain temperature, it will contribute to fire. Eh? So this fire. Yeah, by right, fire comes from heat, yeah? so in the by right, the, the electrical system sh should capable to detect the leakage current yeah? contributed by the failure of insulation in the cable, yeah? and then it will shoot the tip. Yeah? So we should we should we should note that it's not only on the material operation device. We should also think about the maintenance issues, yeah? whether the, the our system is clean. Yeah? So these issues which can contribute to the fire, we need to think about it. Okay. Uh, so there are a lot, lot of other uh, disturbance in power system. As we know, there are over and other voltage, over and other voltage, short circuit, afford, uh, frequency, over and other frequency overload. Eh? And the most uh, common that we uh, always heard about it is the, due to the short circuit, afford and overload. Eh? Okay. So in terms of compliance to the regulation and standards, uh, I, for example, in the IEC 60364 part four, they had already they had listed eh, the the situation that uh, the technical person had to consider. Eh. Among them are electrical shocks, position gain, electrical shocks, thermal effect, overcurrent, over over voltage. Eh. So from the table, you can we can see that eh, the the for in terms of concept of protection. Each uh, category, which is person, life, and properties, are being protected eh, under these four cases. Eh. For example, for uh, for person, it can it should protect from the electrical shock and thermal effect. Eh. 
and properties we need to consider thermal effect and the overcurrent and over voltage even though thermal effect is is very we 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 think it's very small to the properties but upon time it will become a, a fire eh? okay uh, let's go through a little bit detail on the uh, safety of protection eh? there are a few concept on the uh, five concept here i won't elaborate uh, all but uh, some some cases to for us to think about it eh? for example the first one which we we as electrical uh, people should know sir so i believe all had learned this one it's very basic concept uh, protection against, against direct and indirect contact eh? so the con the direct contact means for example worst case scenario uh, you touch the bus bar live bus bar eh? so this one as a uh, protection people we need to pro uh, provide a protection from people uh, to touch the live bus bar which is this one we call it protection against protection against direct contact and eh? then on this or this one uh, we also call it as basic protection eh? So another one is a uh, indirect contact. Eh? For example, after we had insulate this electrical part, either you uh, you compartmentalize it. Eh? For example, in this this example, then we need to think that there is a possibilities that the insulation of the material might fail. Eh? So once the ins there is a insulation failure, so there is a possibility for the leakage current to flow, and the, the leakage current might uh, kill the person. Eh? So we need to think uh, another way how to protect from the uh, leakage current uh, to affect uh, the people. Eh? So this one we call as indirect contact. So in this case, we need to think how to protect the people uh, from the indirect contact. Okay, this one we consider we call it as under fault protection. This one uh, normal normal condition. This one under abnormal condition or fault con condition. Okay. These are among things that uh, basic concept how to prevent eh, from those uh, direct and indirect contact. For example, for this in this case, uh, they had uh, is, uh, raise uh, raise the uh, the equipment to become higher, eh, so that uh, people cannot touch it directly. Eh. So this one uh, we we had we uh, they install the uh, barrier uh, so for that normal people cannot access it. Eh. Even we, if we can see the our cable also, the basic concept of double insulation is also similar to what uh, to concept of uh, indirect contact. Eh? Similar to our equipment, uh, there is a concept of class two insulation, which is have a double protection for the first basic insulation and supplementary insulation. Okay. Uh, let's go through go through to the second uh, second uh, protection against overcurrent eh? so the purpose of protection against overcurrent is for the safety of personnel eh? and then which is normally uh, due to the electrical shock eh? and in, in terms of property it should be uh, protection against fire hazard eh? so the purpose is to maintain reliable life of the equipment and the system eh? So over current, it can it, uh, due to the ex current exceeding to the normal current value, it can happen to the equipment or also to the cable eh, when it reach uh, more than the current carrying capacity of the cable. Eh. Other other factor of over current is overload, eh, which is a combination of high current and time. Eh. Well, so so when the time increase, the fault goes through uh, over a long time. We call it as overload yeah? and the most popular one is a fault a short circuit a fault so sometimes when you hear a forensic report from bomber due to due to fire they call it as uh, due to the short circuit factor yeah? so which sometimes uh, the, short, the short, short circuit terms is quite uh, uh, quite subjective yeah? so we need to go through what caused the short circuit it can be to the equipment or to the cable or maybe is it to the uh, to the uh, failure of uh, system. Eh? Okay, so among the protection device in this case uh, for, for protection against overcurrent is the fuse uh, MCB, and if you if you combine MCB with the RCD, we call it as RCBO, eh? and then we have MCCB and as circuit breaker. I won't, I won't go through into detail. Uh, we just uh, go through in the concept of the protection. Eh? Okay, another uh, aspect that we need to consider is protection against a fault. Eh? 
So in the uh, when we said afford, we need to uh, we always uh, talking about the earning system. Yeah? So the purpose of earning system is to provide low resistance path to the ground for any surge, yeah? let's say lightning, so that we can protect the uh, our system. Yeah? And then another issue is so during port during port those port current must be uh, diverted to the uh, to the ground so that we can protect the equipment. And then for those equipment uh, uh, protection device, they must uh, act quickly eh, according to the uh, to the to the uh, fault current value. Eh? Okay, uh, this are another point is that uh, being as a reference value and impacts uh, to mitigate impact of EMC. Eh? Okay. So in terms of regulation, uh, uh, electrical regulation 1984 had already specified in detail uh, uh, what uh, technical purpose or those in the electrical industry must adhere. Uh. For example, in uh, regulation 36, uh, it is a four sub bracket. Uh. The first one is uh, for protection against public entertainment venues. For example, uh, those uh, kiddie machine when you go to shopping mall. Uh. So those uh, kiddie machine, by right, according to the laws and regulation, it should be protected using RCD uh, with the sensitivity current of uh, sensitivity of 10 milliamp. Eh? This one I think is very rare for us to see. Eh? And then uh, those, uh, for example, in our house, eh, we're using the water heater. So in regulation, we should use uh, RCCB or RCD with the Sensitivity, sensitivity current of 10 milliamp. Eh? And then for uh, regulation 36 bracket 3, so uh, if you are using the, we, we, are, we are using the handheld equipment, so those handheld equipment should, uh, should use a RCB rated at sensitivity current 30 milliamp. Eh? And uh, even though regulation had, uh, had specified all these values for, to protect the people, the public, but they had also considered uh, under certain cases, special case, eh, so they, uh, they allow eh, for, to use the bigger uh, uh, sizing, which is 100 milliamp, uh, just in case to allow uh, any, any leakage current that we already know in the system, but it's not uh, uh, danger to the people. Okay, let's, uh, let us go through to the next. Uh, uh, slide which is uh, understanding the protection system. So this, these are among things that uh, uh, we as uh, those involved in the protection need to know. So for example, uh, number one, we need to, to know the different protection equipment and the applications. There are various types of uh, protection device. And so before we decide to use whichever equipment, we need to know uh, what, are the, what are the function and what are the application. And, especially to avoid the redundancy in the uh, equipment, which will be costly. Eh? And number two, we need to understand the current and voltage transformer function, which is uh, as input to the protection system. Eh? Number three, uh, we, are, we need to understand the connection drawings in, in terms of AC and DC connection, eh? because uh, we have a, a, a primary and secondary connection wiring. Eh? And then number four, port current. Yes, when we're talking about protection, we cannot run away from the port current. Eh? And then uh, number five, relay setting. Those are the knowledge that we need to learn. Eh? We need to know how to, how to set the relay setting, even starting from the basic one, ELR, earth leakage relay until uh, over current port relays. Eh? And number six, uh, number six eh, for us, after we know how to set the relays, we need to understand how to commission, uh, com do the commissioning eh, and witness the, 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 during the testing and setting or calibration. Eh. And number seven, eh, uh, we need to understand how to interpret, interpret the test result. Eh, the test result uh, from the table or also from the uh, TCC, eh, time characteristic curve, which they, uh, they will present us the uh, coordination of the relays. Eh? And number, number eight, uh, especially for those in the maintenance, uh, uh, taking care of the facility management, we need to know the behavior of the electric equipment. Eh? For example, the basic one is the, when we want to energize the power transformer, what are the inrush current, eh? 
and number nine is ability to analyze the relay operation. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, next is the performance and design criteria for protection system device. There are five uh, concepts that we need to think about. Eh? We need to cons to know when we're talking, when we discuss in the protection system, they are, these are the five terms that people are, are, uh, uh, are using in the, to, to measure the performance of the protection system. Eh? One is the reliability. And eh? Re reliability, uh, is defined as uh, that the device device must function consistently when port conditions occur, and and when uh, it also must have backup and uh, backup operation when main protection fail. So if you if you will, we go back to the basic uh, concept of protection, we we will learn the main and backup protection. Then reliability also uh, uh, some people define it uh, deeper. They they. They discuss it about dependability and security eh, to make it short. Eh. The depend dependability uh, means uh, it should trip when it should. Eh. When port happen, it should trip. Eh. And security or stability, it means that it won't trip when it shouldn't. Eh. Sometimes we, people call it uh, sympathetic tripping eh, because uh, in terms of protection, we uh, the, the concept is to uh, minimize, uh, minimize the time and also to just isolate those area being affected, eh? not not just let's say the fault the fault happened to the due to the uh, faulty in the first floor. Eh? So it should trip only the first floor power supply only. Eh? It shouldn't trip the whole blocks power supply. So it, it happened. We call it uh, uh, the system is not, it's not uh, stable. Eh? Okay. And second uh, criteria are selectivity, or some people call it discrimination. Eh? So, which is which means a preference for which device should trip first. Eh? So, in this case, uh, we have uh, they have we have two 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 selectivity, which is in terms of current and time. So, for, for those in the doing the setting value, so we need to know how to do setting on the time and current. Eh? Okay. Uh, another factor is the speed. Eh? So, industry, especially those manufacturer, um. Uh, the thing to shows that how speed their their, their device can uh, protect the equipment. Eh? So sometimes they call it as a uh, uh, fast tripping. Eh? So those those equipment uh, device are uh, uh, yes they can function uh, as fast as they can. Eh? But as in the whole system protection, we need to consider the grading margin and eh? the port current value etc. The fourth, the fourth uh, criteria is the economics, which is involve cost. Yeah? So we shouldn't just buy expensive equipment to protect our our, our system or premises without knowing what are what are the costs. Yeah? And number five, the simplicity. Yeah? Simplicity means we need to keep it short and simple, uh, especially uh, for those who will maintain the the system. Yeah? Okay, let's go through goes through some of the concept. Uh, for example, performance and cost. For example, diffusion relay is a very sensitive relay and pass, but it is very costly. So we need to, to, to think twice whether you want to use it or not. Okay. Uh, number two is the fastest, uh, fast. Yes, we, we need one a, a fast uh, equipment uh, in our system, but we need to bear in mind that uh, the the function of a uh, protection device which is only to minimize uh, minimize the effect to our system eh? we cannot we cannot totally prevent the fault from happen but we can do what we can do is to minimize the effect eh? uh, number three uh, for example cheaper over current effort relay in the market and eh? so we 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 choose a, a cheaper one eh? but we need we also not cons need to consider that we want when we buy a cheap uh, relay it will the performance also is not that good yes? for example it will the 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 what the processing part in the numerical part processing in the relay is a slower yes? which is when uh, the times uh, increase and will the port current will travel more and will uh, effect on the injuries and damage yes? and number four we need to consider also on the uh, cost, eh? cost uh, 
either we want to invest uh, uh, in the high high cost equipment, uh, thinking that it will protect our system, uh, but we, we we didn't consider how how many fault might happen in the system. Yeah? So we need to do the the risk analysis, uh, the probability for the fault to happen in our system. Yeah? For example, if you are if you are uh, we are maintaining the the prime minister office, yeah? so it's a very sensitive area. So you might want to uh, to prevent uh, from from even even one uh, one tripping to happen. Yeah? So we we will install more protection to to avoid it from happen. Yeah? But for those, for example, schools, which is let's say it's a tripping, uh, we can just close the school, uh, up, uh, stop the class, yeah? or just. Uh, uh, let the student goes uh, goes back home. Eh? So those things we, we need to consider the 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 importance of the premises that we're protecting. Eh? Now the issue, the another example is uh, simplicity versus complexity. Eh? So nowadays uh, there are a lot of uh, technology on numerical relays. Eh? Uh, so those uh, numerical relays have too many features. Eh? But sometimes we, we, we don't need those, let's say they, they offered, uh, this one can, uh, the maker relay have, uh, have been programmed with 20 features, eh? but we only need uh, over current effort functions only. So why do we have to buy, uh, we need to get uh, those uh, uh, extra features, uh, especially for those uh, in maintenance, do not know how to operate it. Eh? Okay, sometimes they just want to know the function that they want to use. Eh? Uh, second thing is the uh, when we, we we design the system complicated scheme eh, to protect too many backup uh, and uh, main protection. So this thing sometimes is we need to consider who will maintain the system. Eh? It's either we do it automatically or we want uh, the charge man or the service engineer, competent engineer to maintain it manually. Eh? So this thing we need to consider eh, whether to make it too complicated for people to maintain it, eh, or either to just make it simple so that the operator can can uh, control the system. Eh. Okay. In number three, uh, critical information required for the setting might not be easily available. Eh. So for example, uh, when we need to we need to get the the fault current value to do the, to calculate the setting, uh, and uh, the transformer data, the cable data, so we we might not got uh, get the, those information. So what we 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 consider is we need to consider the previous history, what are the setting, and what are the new load being being connected. Yeah? So those things sometimes we just need to get a good reference on the previous history for us to to change the setting value. Yeah? Okay, the last one is the consequence uh, consequence on the complexity of protection eh? yeah. so as i told before so we need to consider uh, what are the system we protected how how critical are the premises or the equipment so that we can we can set uh, the, the the protection scheme okay uh, the basic concept of protection if i can uh, share with you the simple analogy protection relays uh, with the car insurance eh? So in the car insurance, uh, for, for uh, to protect your car, and right, it depends how much you want to pay the premium depends on the on your car. Right? If you buy a Ferrari, you might want to to spend more to pay the insurance on the premium the insurance. Right? But if you just buy a, a, a cheap car, so you you might just uh, even some people just buy a, a third party a third party insurance. Right? It's, it's go similar to the electrical system, eh? so it depends. Let's say you are your your installation are in, involving a high voltage or medium voltage equipment, so you might want to spend more money on, on your protection system. Eh? Okay, and then secondly, the risk that you want to take, eh? we need to consider. Eh? For example, as I told before, who's live in that premises? Is it king, or sultan? Or for example, is it, is it, uh, is it a hospital eh? so where, where people uh, uh, are relying on the equipment and eh? those on the life, life uh, bedridden patient? So we cannot we cannot uh, have a, a failure of, of electrical supply. So we need to um, protect our system with uh, more 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 uh, equipment, eh? and then. 
the third one is the amount of money you wish to spend and eh? so we need to consider also what are the the budget that we have and eh? instead of just thinking to have uh, every every distribution every subsidy board message board being protected we then we need to consider also how much money we have eh? or we just protect the main and and others others uh, other zone if there is a tripping we just allow it for it to happen eh? so it depends on on the money uh, that we have eh? and then the last one is uh, uh, we also need to consider from the some, some other aspect eh? uh, what happen if uh, you don't have any insurance eh? for example okay as long as you don't have any accident eh? so means you uh, for electrical system let's say we know that this this uh, uh, this system is not that critical and eh? so let's say even even there is a faulty we can just uh, we can just uh, shut down the premise eh? for example uh, uh, in the office and eh? small office or school let's say let's say one well, the equipment uh, damage due to fault so we can just close the office and eh? it's not that critical but if we think that the schools of uh, office is critical, so we need to uh, to provide a better electrical system. Eh? Okay. So the last uh, the last point, why invest so much money for things that might operate it, eh? might not operate it? Eh? So we need to bear in mind that sometimes the money that we spend in the to protect the equipment the the protection device might not trip for the whole life of the that premises eh? so sounds uh, wasting money but this this is uh, the the benefit of uh, buying an insurance eh? when something uh, uh, something bad happen you need it and when, when there is no new no news which is uh, nothing bad happen then then it's good for you eh? it's, it's not a waste of money eh? okay uh, I just go to some of part, uh, some of the I just expect uh, that uh, protection had considered. For example, in the IEC 0664, they had uh, uh, provide guidelines for the installation, the protection in the bathroom, swimming pools, eh, even uh, uh, agriculture, eh, even a PV cell. So they are the the standard had uh, listed all the protection measures that uh, as a guidance uh, for. For uh, practitioner to follow, eh? so these are some 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 examples, especially in the swimming pool or other protection that we need to do. So we, you can refer to the standards, eh? PV also the basic co concept of protection that we need to install. Eh? Okay, uh, in the, this this one is example in the, in the agri agricultural. Eh? So in this uh, concept also, for example, even the earning system, even though it's just to protect the animal. So that uh, we as a, a protection people must uh, know uh, which part, uh, which is uh, at least the minimum uh, guideline to protect uh, protection. Eh? Okay. So basically, once uh, uh, once there is any cases happen, and then let's say uh, the client sue us, and eh? so the 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 bottom line is that uh, how 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 much we follow to the minimum standards that being uh, in the industry. So once we had uh, fulfilled the minimum standards, then we are in the safe place. Eh? Unless we, we didn't, we just take for, grant, for granted, didn't follow the, the procedure, just follow our design concept, then we are in trouble when something bad happened. Eh? Okay, uh, I just go through some of the, uh, some cases happen. Eh? So even though we had uh, specified a very good, uh, uh, description ABQ in the drawing. There are also some issues uh, in the in the industry. For example, like imitation. Eh? So, but this this brand, eh? I'm not promoting the brand. Just shows uh, some of the cases. Eh? So you can see that uh, the left and right uh, MCB eh? they look similar. Eh? Even they had specified what are the standard eh? it have been complied, but there are also imitation. Eh? So what, what are the problem by buying an imitation? Eh? They look similar, but the price is cheaper. Eh? For, exam for example, in our house, eh? uh, the, the electrical contractor are offering uh, two materials. He said, whether you want a 
budget one or the good quality. Eh? So if we in our house, sometimes we also okay lah, buy economy one, uh, economic one, uh, cheaper budget. Eh? So but uh, when we go through to the to the uh, internal of the MCB, eh? for example, this is a example of uh, imitation one. Eh? So we can see here the component. Eh? For example, when we go uh, see inside the MCB, there is a arc place eh? to quench the arc. Eh? So this is a toggle the, to on off the MCB. So what will happen when the, we on off the, the breaker, the arcing will go through to the arc plates eh, to quench the arc. Eh? So in this case, there is no arc plate. Eh? The cut cost, eh? cut cost of the material. Eh? So what will happen? This, uh, firstly, the arcing along the time when you switch on off the MCB, it will degrade eh, the material. Eh? And upon the time, it will the arcing will uh, will become fire to the to the our DB or MCB. Eh? So these are the, the small thing that we need to know so the real issues. Eh? Okay. Uh, others is the RCD selection of RCD. Let's do a current device. Eh? Uh, just go to quickly. So there are a, a few by right under standards. Uh, if you see this shark fin, it means that uh, it protects against nuisance tripping. Eh? For example, when lightning happen, by right the RCD shouldn't trip. Eh? Sometimes people said uh, when the RCD trip due, due to lightning is good. Eh? By right, standard has specified eh? the RCD shouldn't trip against the uh, nuisance tripping. Eh? Okay, so there are a lot of uh, got category under RCD. Yeah? So as, the, as uh, we go to the te uh, now technologies are using AC and DC. Yeah? So the selection of RCD are uh, very important. For example, we in JKR, we are using a type A. Yeah? Even though uh, type B is better, we need to consider what are the uh, uh, most commonly type of uh, equipment being used by the, uh, by the premises. Yeah? Okay. Uh, the last topic is on the issues and challenges. Yeah? Uh, so there are some, some challenges in the protection that I can share in this uh, short time. For example, uh, regulation uh, under the electricity uh, regulations, uh, under regulation 110, uh, bracket 4, uh, it has specified that uh, the relays uh, must be uh, calibrated, tested and calibrated by a competent person at least every two years eh? or or any other time that being directed by the Energy Commission. Eh? So there are uh, sometimes there are different understanding on the definition of relay. Some some said that uh, ELR, Earth Leakage Relay, is not a relay. Eh? So they didn't calibrate the relay. Eh? Uh, by, by, by right, uh, under the regulation, since the name itself is a relay, so it should be uh, calibrated eh, every two years. Eh? Uh, okay. Uh, and then also the frequency and, and duration. Eh? As we can see that in this regulation has specified clearly every two years. Eh? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, last year, uh, uh, some of our, our key players in the industry had uh, suggest to the Energy Commission to revise uh, this two years uh, duration because it had affect uh, their operations when they want to do the maintenance uh, uh, to test it and calibrate the, the relays. Eh? They need to shut down the, the plant, eh? which will affect the operation of the, their, their business. Eh? So in this case, uh, uh, I think so far, uh, Energy Commission had, had didn't decide anything. Eh? So it remains uh, two years, but interestingly, uh, when we discuss uh, how, how does that two years come? Eh? It didn't. Uh, it didn't come from any standard. So because if you refer to the different country, uh, there is some country are using uh, uh, define it as five years. Eh? So basically, the issues in, in the industry is that uh, relays had become more efficient, eh? more efficient, and the error is very minimum, very minimum. Eh? So sometimes uh, uh, they feel that there is no, 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 uh, no. Uh, no requirement to to do the calibration because the error is very 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 marginal, uh, very marginal. But um, going to the broaden broaden uh, expect that 
uh, there are yes uh, some client or consumer uh, have much money to buy a very good uh, or branded uh, uh, relays eh? but we need to consider also those premises which are uh, using a very minimum uh, required uh, specification of relays which the performance might not that good eh? so uh, as a regula regulation uh, 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 purpose to protect the public so it's good eh, just to to protect the minimum situation so that uh, so that uh, public being protected and eh? so uh, the two years period or uh, even though it's a uh, will be costly to the operation but uh, the owner of the premises premises need to consider eh, whether it's a, a safety or money or, or people lives eh? okay so these are the, the issues eh? Uh, among other issues, uh, I think in the industry is the grading, eh, the time multiplier setting limitation. As we learn uh, in the classroom, uh, we have a, a time a PMS setting from 0 0.05 up to 1.0. Eh? So we can see that the, the 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 range for us to do the the the, the TMS setting is very wide. Eh? But in real case, eh, we 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 dealing with the utility to get the the setting value. Uh, the the margin is very minimum, which is uh, we must set below uh, TMS zero point one. Eh? So and then so it will restrict us uh, from have from having a good grading grading coordination within relays. Eh? Uh, we just rely on the current setting. Hopefully, uh, by adjusting the TMS. Uh, and current setting, we can good have a grading margin. And so, grading margin also is another issues whether we want to get a, a, a basically a, as recommended in the in the books or manufacturer they recommend to get a 0 0.4. But now, as equipment become uh, more efficient, we can get uh, 0 0.3 or 0 0.2 second. Okay. Uh, another challenges is the multi uh, the option of multi multiple relay group setting. So, so these are the options that uh, uh, need to consider, especially when the features are there, but how about the communication uh, or networking uh, connection between this relay? Right? Okay. Uh, another issue is the, the, uh, the, the IoT, Internet of Things uh, technologies, uh, the issues of remote and wireless switching. Yeah? So in that the, basically the industry um, our manufacturer are promoting the use of uh, remote and wireless switching eh? but on the practical side especially uh, on the maintenance and eh, we need to consider whether uh, our people eh, uh, uh, have the integrity to use this system eh? I, I have my experience eh, we are uh, uh, inst installing a protection system for upgrading the hospitals so we are we trying uh, we are try the wireless uh, uh, wireless switching. Eh? So, but even though the technology is there, but we only use only during the TNC and eh? upon handing over, we didn't uh, uh, we didn't set the function of the wireless because of the operational issues and safety issues. Eh? Uh, is it, it can be a risk due to the cyber 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 security. Eh? Whether people can hack our system, so those are the things that uh, industry I think uh, still not ready to use, it, especially in those critical area which uh, involve public. Eh? Uh, I think uh, that's all uh, I would I want to share on the issues and challenges. So as a conclusion, uh, uh, knowing the important and the importance of electrical protection is not the end, eh? but uh, it's just a beginning. Eh? We, uh, as a technical people, must learn and unlearn those uh, knowledge which is uh, uh, not correct, eh? and then practice. Eh? Just learn without practice. Uh, we 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 didn't we didn't know what are the issues on the ground. Eh? Uh, with that, uh, I end my uh, sharing today. Eh? Uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, on behalf of IEEE PES Malaysia and YP Malaysia, I would like to thank IR Dr. Muhammad Shahrani Abdul Rahim for the very informative talk.
Okay, so I believe that all of us have understand on the electrical protection so system. You, Dr. In... Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sharani. Okay, so I believe that um, all of us have understand on the electrical protection system, including all the standards and regulation available. Okay, how to protect personal and property due to fault, the concept of protection and issues and challenges regarding the uh, protection system. Okay, so uh, now I will proceed with the uh, Q&A session. Okay, so I will read the uh, questions from the uh, chat box. Okay. Um, okay, so for the first one um, from um, artificial leaf, Okay, for this stat, uh, statistic kemalangan electric, the number of maut and uh, tidak maut looks constant. Isn't because the network of TNB is growing also over the years. Okay, any comments, Dr. Sharani? Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, I, I think um, we shouldn't just see on the on the numbers lah uh, i see it on the pattern eh? on the pattern uh, basically yes i agree it's a growing it's a number okay. uh, we, if we can see number of uh, from years to years now years to years uh, it is stable eh? which is we can see that uh, the mb also is at improve for their is their their competency of their personnel. Eh? If you if know that now TMB had uh, uh, Sonja Tenaga had enforced uh, TMB to, to have uh, their competent person, no more AP, uh, which is I think some, some sensitive, uh, quite sensitive issues. It's good uh, for the industry and also for us uh, as a consumer. So. Okay. okay, thank you Dr. Sharani. Okay, um, another thought from the same um, participant. Okay, uh, on the importance of electrical protection on electrical equipment, we can see like phone charger, many cheap charges sold uh, publicly at shops. Many cases, these charges got burned or explode at home. Okay. Okay, so this is the, um, uh, just a comment from um, the participant. Okay due to cheap charges okay yeah agree so this goes back to the economic issues lah eh? yeah okay um the next one is from uh prasant krishnan uh, doctor how to differentiate whether the item reliability based on cost if all in market are serum certified <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think the the it's a very very uh, quite tricky to answer now uh, because all all manufacturers we claim that has certified uh, especially like we are same like a uh, halal logos lah and yeah uh, it it depends on I think it's it depends on the on the how we we get the feedback from the market for example recently in jkr also uh, we tested random, randomly those equipment being us eh? recently uh, mcb we had like this uh, the brand even though it's got certification from iec serum eh? but uh, due to the reports uh, complaints from the consumers we do some testing so in other way, I think uh, is get the feedback from the public now. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, this uh, one participant, Kurt Cobain, this one I think he just suggested um, the answer for Prasan just now. Okay, uh, I think the reliability is based on a minimum standard that are required to achieve. Cost maybe depends on the module offered. Okay, so this is this reflects to the previous uh, participants' question, I believe. Okay, so the next uh, question asked by uh, Isham Zainal Abidin. 
uh, how do we identify genuine and um, imitation product? Okay, uh, thank, thank you, Professor. Uh, it's very tricky how to identify uh, those, uh, the quality. Eh? But ba basically, the first thing is you can see from the cost. Nah, eh? Cost. Eh? Uh, when you see a cheap price, and uh, even though nowadays those uh, equipment are being uh, being sell at uh, Shopee, eh? you can buy mm -hmm. you can buy MCB at Shopee with very cheap price. Eh? Okay. Uh, so we have to be careful. Eh? Uh, even though I also have my uh, personal experience uh, buying a uh, MCB uh, at the uh, at the shops and eh? okay. uh, DIY shops, it's very mm -hmm. cheap. Eh, compared mm. to what we in JKR uh, uh, estimate. And eh? so even though in the hardware shop also this thing happen. Eh? So we okay. have to at least know the answer the, the, the price. Huh? Uh, okay. But if you probably don't have time, you can call the manufacturer, check the batch, manufacturing batch number. Uh, but that will be uh, uh, take some time lah. Eh? <laughs> Okay, Dr. Sharani, next question. Uh, did you revise your setting regularly? Okay, uh, this setting value, uh, a buy rack, uh, as uh, the saying says, uh, no news is good news. Eh? So when there is no, nothing bad happen or nothing uh, tripping, we shouldn't touch the system, let it be there. Eh? But uh, basically, the rules is once there is a additional load in the system, so we need to, to do the power system study again, calculate back the port current. Eh? So we need to uh, calculate the setting value again. Eh? Uh, and then uh, if uh, there is a tripping case, eh? so we need to check back again our system and revise the setting value. But if there is no changes, eh? for example, in the industry, the calibration period of two years, if nothing have nothing changes happen, uh, so the tester just follow the, the original setting value. They just do the calibration to verify that the efficiency of the uh, device only. Okay. Okay. Next question from Aliu. What type of protection should be provided at the bus bar before immediately after the secondary terminals of a transformer supplying a building? Okay, uh, I assume this one uh, should be at the main switchboard. Eh? That means after the transformer had stepped down eh, from primary mm -hmm. secondary, let's say for LV, it should be 415 volt. So basically, in uh, uh, in JKR, we just should afford relay eh, uh, to protect the the any port current from the from the upstream eh? okay. okay okay so the next one how about home elr also need to test and calibrate by competent person based on the law yeah true this mm -hmm. is a, i think a quite common question and eh? mm -hmm. uh, I think by, by this guy also yeah why lie uh, if you have ELR in your home I think you be should be rich huh? <laughs> so normally in our home you only have uh, RCCB and yeah? okay so if you have ELR yes we need to invest money to protect uh, your life and your home yeah? so okay. basically if you just appoint a test I think you should at least three hundred ringgit uh, if you can get a very reasonable price. Yeah? Okay. So as the regulation says, any relays we have to calibrate. Why? Because, uh, because the reason some people said uh, school of thought, uh, different school of thought, LR and RCCB is from similar uh, family, similar similar family. Hmm. So, uh, Alamak. Uh, Dr. Sharani, your microphone is mute. Can you please unmute it? Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, some school of thought saying that uh, 
release uh -huh. and ELR is the same same value, uh, same same group. Uh, but the difference is RCCB is a fixed thing. Uh, but ELR, we can adjust the setting. So once people can adjust the setting, it will involve people's life. Uh, so that's why we need to check the calibration uh, to ensure that the, set, the original setting value being introduced by the uh, engineer or the, the calculation will keep on protecting the system. Okay. Okay, so the next question um, is sync check relay consider protection relay because some third, pass, third party tester don't cover it under their quotation. Sync check relay. Yes, uh, sync check is part of protection uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what does it mean by not under their quotation uh, but basically if I can try to understand means because sync relay they don't have they don't need any uh, sticker or calibration by the tester so sync check relay normally what my practice is uh, just doing the PNC we just check the functionality of this check relay according to the performance or criteria being set. Uh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, next is um, is ELCB rating requirement in Semenanjung different with Sarawak? Okay, uh, ELCB. Uh, yeah. uh, first of all, uh, let me correct the, the terms. Lah. It should be I don't think so now people are still using ELCB because it's the voltage operated. Now we are already moving I think, to the uh, to RCD which is based on current operated. Uh, so RCD as uh, I showed in the slides, uh, uh, they have uh, under regulation uh, to 36, uh, they had specified the rating, uh, the sensitivity. Yeah. Uh, since uh, Sarawak is under EIU, uh, I'm not very sure, but I believe it should be the same uh, because Sarawak uh, quite special. They have their own uh, regulation. So even I, I myself have a thought. Uh, uh, Dr. Sharani, again, your mic is uh, mute. Oh, so even I myself have a project in uh, Sarawak. So we have we need to deal uh, quite uh, special issues lah with the Sarawak. Okay. Okay, so uh, next one is uh, PV installation. Any issues on the relay setting? Uh, I don't think so. There is uh, issues uh, on the relay setting. I think maybe some, some highlight it because of the uh, port current. Eh? Uh, but as uh, as far as I know, fault current from PV is not that big eh? uh, compared mm. to the motor base. Eh? So there is no issues on the relay setting. We just treat it similar to the uh, supply from the grid. Okay. Unless you are talking about the dis distribution line, lah, that we are under, under another topic, lah. Okay. Okay. So there are a few more questions here. Okay, so the next one, uh, is it necessary to deploy new numerical protection devices to integrate networks, but this will increase the protection equipment cost? How to relate this issue in terms of cost and relay deployment? Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sama, my friends. Uh, okay, so this uh, new numerical uh, uh, protection device, and eh? there are some uh, research uh, trying to propose uh, uh, the, the new, uh, more advancement of numerical method. Eh? So it means how does the, the relays analyze the port current and determine whether to trip it. Uh, but, uh, faster or later. Eh? So I think uh, uh, from my observation in the, in the industry, those existing uh, uh, 
characteristic in the relays uh, still haven't been explored uh, in detail. Eh? So if you want to introduce more characteristic, I think it will uh, will will uh, will affect the industry and especially on the costing lah. Eh? Unless there are huge demand to to have a new characteristic or new numerical method, eh? but in terms of uh, competitiveness in the industry, especially those uh, manufacturer, yes, we are encouraged for them uh, to find a better performance uh, of the release. Okay, thank you. Okay, next, uh, morning, doctor. In some electrical appliances, there's no earthing pin at their plug. How does the devices and the users get protection from leakage? From leakage, uh, okay. Sorry. So this means, uh, especially uh, those uh, equipment. Uh, for example, they have a two-pin plug, right? So two-pin plug. How do you get protection from leakage current? Oh, okay. So once once uh, there is, uh, we just simulate once there is a, a leakage current to the system, uh, it will leak to the to the body. And eh? so once the the body, uh, there is a, we have a phase and neutral uh, car, uh, line. So the the leakage current will Okay. And we'll find the way uh, to the source and as I showed in the previous slides and so they find the way so even the, let's say the neutral uh, line uh, catch uh, find the the, what, the unbalance in the current return return and return current so the LCD will cut it uh, as a residual so we we'll take because the concept uh, still on the RCD which is residual current okay so next one, uh, doctor, since TMS at TNB terminal has been set to 0 0.1, it is very difficult to do coordination at downstream feeder up to four level. Is it okay the discrimination time to be set to 0 0.1 second between the relay? Hmm. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jasol. Uh, very good uh, question. Uh, the discrimination time or some called grading margin, uh, as far as if I know, is just the minimum one is recommended, is, is fastest one is 0 0.2. Eh? Uh, there is some, mm -hmm. uh, one of my friends in TMB, uh, he had done some research and he proposed, uh, tested the best grading margin, but the, the mm -hmm. smallest value that uh, they can get is 0 0.2. Which is there yeah. from the simulation relay setting? We try uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. From the simulation, yes, you can get 0 0.2. Then what we should do is test on the secondary side, inject the the, the current and see whether the testing is uh, fulfilled the, the the protection setting. But so far, uh, for my knowledge, the one one is 0 0.2. Because uh, okay. if you see the the characteristic is there is a lot of factor to be considered lah. Okay. Okay. So uh, another one is um hi doctor. Normally earth leakage protection for lighting is hundred milliam, and small power or socket is thirty milliam in a DB with cable. Okay. So um. The next one is if we use bus conduct system at final circuit side, can we use the same bus duct for lighting and power? Oh, okay. Uh, first of all, yes. The answer is yes. We need to follow the the sensitivity value as uh, this as uh, regulated, which is hundred. Uh, for lighting, which is non-handheld non hand -hand equipment, and 30 milliamp for handheld equipment or socket. Uh, but the second thing, I, I the first, it's the first time I heard that I use that for final circuit. Maybe it's very special uh, installation, maybe. But okay. it, it, uh, there is no, uh, no correlation between the cable and the 
protection device or RCD because the leakage current is is on, on is on the equipment uh, stored from the equipment it's carrying the cable uh, the country so there's no uh, no exemption you still have to follow the regulation even though you are using the bus duct okay and the last one is from the same participant um and provide rccb at each step of unit with respective sensitivity and number uh, no rccb at the bus duct outgoing site in db i think this relates to the previous two questions uh. Can I, I try to ask, understand the question? No RCCB at the bus dock inside the room. I can't uh, get the the question. Maybe, it's basically uh, uh, from the previous question. The um from for the uh lighting hundred milliamp. Okay. Hmm. Uh, it's Can from this question. question. Okay, then okay if one. we are using bus system at final circuit site, can we use the same bus duct for lighting and power and provide RCCB at each step of unit? Oh, okay. I think if, if you, uh, you are referring to the incoming protection and uh, outgoing protection, uh, in the case of uh, step of unit, I think incoming is sufficient lah. we don't have to uh, to to uh, double protection the incoming and outgoing eh? incoming mm -hmm. uh, one side is is sufficient eh? because you will okay. have the because normally rccb we install at the uh, the final circuit in the db eh? so at the type of unit i think or support we should install elr eh? for you to have a good discrimination uh, by having discrimination between rcb and cb is not very, very good practice okay okay so uh that's all for the q a so i can see that there are lots of questions that means this uh, topic is very very interesting dr sharani okay so um once again, I would like to thank IR Dr. Muhammad Sharani for uh, answering all the questions from the participants. Okay, so now we have come to the end of our program for today. Okay, thank you all participants who joined us um, in this webinar. So I hope that uh, all of you can continue supporting IEEE PES Malaysia and also YP Malaysia in our future events. Okay, with that, um, I end the webinar program for today. Thanks a lot, Dr. Sharani, and to all participants. Yeah. Okay, and with that, uh, stay safe, everyone, and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.